Let's talk about paper. My name is Ferran, as Mike said at work at Polstack. So we are mostly writing cross-platform applications, and we are also doing, looks like, a nice cloth branding, as you can see on this guy. <laughs> and the important thing also is, as you might have guessed, because I work at Colstack, I know all the people that is involved with this awesome conference. So if you check on my left, please give a big round of applause to Ada and everybody that organizes this. And now let's go for the topic. So of course, we're going to talk about React Native Paper or Paper for Friends. So what is Paper, actually? Uh, paper is a library we've been working on the past months. And it actually allows you to write fully those platform designs, material design UIs, for your React Native app. Uh, moreover, Paper is written by obsessed people, obsessed people like me and my team. And what we want to do, what is our end goal here, is that the end user the user doesn't need to know that it actually uses React Native. They don't really care about that. They want to see, they want to have a native feeling in both platforms. So we are trying to mimic the native look and feel on paper. And actually, the other thing about paper is that it's fully cross-platform. If you know about material design on Google, they have uh, all these repositories, so they have a totally different code for Android, iOS, Flutter, web, so we are trying to empower cloud fast form uh, development. So paper is um, one code for both your Android and iOS devices. So maybe in this empty slot here from Google is going to be for paper one day. I don't know. Um, OK, so I want to say a bit about what are the key concepts of React Native paper, because probably you have seen several libraries about material design. So I would like to tell you what it makes it special for us. Uh, the first thing, of course, is following the material design guide, and we are trying to follow it in a strict way. So in React Native Paper, we have what is in this guide. So if we would get a pull request about something that is not in there, we probably won't merge it. And this is because we want to keep this library easy to maintain, so it will not blow up. And um, at, I think the desired state would be that one day this library is done, complete, and we will only have to work on it if there is something new, which happened recently with um, Material Design 2.0 that we will see across this presentation. Uh, another key concept is platform adaptation, which is one of my favorites. Can you raise your hand if you know what is platform adaptation on Google Material Design? OK, so four people. Um, all right. So actually, if you would go to cross-platform adaptation page from Material Design, you would see that there are some variations between platforms. So, for example, on iOS, there will be subtle differences uh, for, for those users to feel more comfortable with it or more familiar with it. So one of the biggest examples is the toolbar. Right now it's called app bar. And for example, on iOS, you would get the back button from iOS. And you would get the title centered, depending on how many actions you have. And with pap in paper, we have all that. So for example, you could use the appbar.header component. Uh, you could use back button. So this back button will look how it needs to look on Android or on iOS. Uh, you could use the content for showing a title and some actions. And you would get this, this result. So on Android, there is no much to say. But on iOS, you would get the back button. And for example, if you have one action, you would get the title center. And if you have more, you would get the title on the left, as the guide says. So this is all in paper, and there are more things like checkbox, radio buttons, switches. So we got all these subtle difference covered. As you can see here, there is an indeterminate state for checkbox, which is new in Material 2.0. So I'm actually showing Material 2.0. Um, another key concept is full theming support. So we've been working since the beginning of paper in this, but right now we extract it to React theme providers. Uh, thanks again to Colstack team. And this, uh, you can use it in your React Native apps. It doesn't need to be with paper, but you can also use it in your React apps for web. Uh, we use the context API. We use a higher order component with theme that I will just explain how it works in a moment. And we provide you with the default theme and dark theme. If you come from the Android wall, you will know the default theme is a light theme, and dark theme is just dark, right? Um, so of course, you can import those um, themes, whatever you like for your app, light or dark. And then you can override those values, for example, for your branding colors. And then, as many libraries, you would use a provider 
so you can pass this theme to your whole app. Uh, and for example, in my app I want to use a dark theme, so I would like my screen to have dark background, so I can wrap it into this higher order component, and then I will get this process of theme with the theme values. And whenever the theme change on the top, uh, it will update the whole app. And if you check the following video, this is quite a nice thing because you can change the whole theme at random, right? You can just change it to dark, you can let your, user, your users choose what colors they want, or you can do like Twitter or Telegram are doing, so you can offer them their theme during the night and light theme during the day. If you come from the Android world, this is the night day pattern. Uh, so with paper is trivial to do, with native Android probably you would spend more time with Android Studio, Studio and probably your computer will burn. <laughs> We also have Portal, so this is, if you are come from React World, this is also familiar for you. Uh, in paper, we use it to render a component in a different place, a parent tree, and basically we are using it to show content above the other, so to decide what goes above the other, because paper is, is basically based on paper, right, so it's layers above the other. And just to show you a quick example, you could maybe want to show a dialogue, and you have a screen with a floating action button, so there is no material library without floating action button. And this would be the right order because dialogue comes after and would show on the top, but you could also mess this order up. So in the following slide, I have a iOS screen on the left and here is where it's messed up. So I changed the order of the code. So the user would be able to click in this floating action button because it's on the top and open it. Uh, you would see this animation later. And this is uh, actually wrong, but you could do it because this is how portal works. But on the right, you would have the right order. So this is the power we're giving to you to show things above the other. You can use portal. Um, another key concept, which has been uh, really important for us in 2.0, is accessibility and right to left support. There is a lot of work done here. We try to have all our components accessible. We need a uh, to keep working on this, we need help on this. Uh, we have this couple of properties, actually trace and component type that they need to be updated because that has been a recent blog post of our React Native that they're getting merged, so we need to change that. Uh, we also got a really nice external contribution about right to left support. So you can check out the example app in the React Native paper repository and if you would click uh, right to left switch, you would see all our components supporting the, the right to left uh, language. And this is pretty nice, so please let us know if everything works uh, okay for you and help us please on this aspect. And last but not least, we have developer experience, which is great. It's not because we are doing it, it is because you have to trust me on this. We use flow types. Um, and important thing, we have a Expo and Snack friendly example inside the negative paper, so you could use Expo app, but you could also go to our documentation, which is auto-generated by flow types. And also, in every page, in every component, you have a link, which it will say, try it on Snack. So it will load this component into Snack, and you can try it right away. We have also a bubble plugin, React Native Paper. So for example, you only need two components from Paper, like a button or something else. So you can use this plugin. It will remove all the models that you don't use from the bundle, so your bundle size will be smaller. And yes, we got some bindings for reason. Uh, <laughs> You can use them with Revolt and Revolt Navigation. We need to update them to 2.0, but they are there. So now that uh, I show you very quick those key concepts, um, I want to talk a bit about components, right? Because this is a library about components. Of course, I don't have time to show all of them, but I just categorize them a bit. We started small by typography because I really don't like to start a React native app and define text and font size. So you can use all the ones that are from Material Design Guide. If none of them are good for you, you can just use text from React Native Paper, so you can customize it. Here you would have uh, pannings, margin, everything customized. Then we jump to touchables, right, because we are writing a mobile app and it's very important to touch something. So we are based on touchable ripples, so we get this ripple effect on Android, this native effect, and you have a compatibility effect for iOS. And then all our touchables, like button, floating action, or checkbox, they are based on that. So. You can see here how the button works, how the ripple, the, the color depends on the color on the button and the color of the theme. Um, we also have this floating action button. We have the new one extended for 2.0 and we have this 
floating action button grab with this nice animation. And I hope paper in the future will include more of these patterns. So we are thinking future to have like collapsible header and all these patterns that are explained in material guide. Um, the next category is navigation. You think it's, it's pretty popular in this conference, right? So we have the app bar, and as you can see here, this is the new app bar for 2.0, so that's why I show before app bar.header, which is on the top, the old toolbar. But then you also have a bottom one, which is new. You can have, you can find it in paper already. We also have this beautiful bottom navigation. Um, and you might be familiar with it because this bottom navigation is actually inside uh, React navigation. And this is another thing we would like for the future to have more helpers and compatibility with React navigation. So now that I have Eric somewhere, maybe after party we can talk business. Um, and of course we have others. We have snack bars. Uh, we have a text input, which is an incredible complicated component. It has a lot of stays, a lot of challenges, error handling. So you, I would also say try it out and let us know how it works. And of course, because we are following this material guide strictly, um, we got a lot of breaking changes. So we got uh, some renaming, some changes into buttons. And because it's a major update to 2.0, uh, we would say we don't care. You need to update it yourself. but we write a nice code mode, so it should take you from 1.0 to 2.0 automatically. Uh, so I guess you are wondering then when is uh, no when is 2.0 ready? And the answer is it's ready. It's released three hours ago, so you can go try it out. We will be in the Colstack booth to answer any question you have uh, from paper. And now I would like to finish talking about people. So. It's true that at Colstock we have right now a small team that we maintain paper, uh, but we got a lot of external contributors and we would like to have more. So maybe I spent five or 10 minutes to do this slide, so I would like to spend more time. So maybe check it out a bit because I spent a lot to make it. So these are all our contributors. So please come help us. Um, we help anybody that wants to contribute. You just open a pull request. We will be helping you on this. We have a lot, a lot of components that need to be written, so it's a great opportunity. Uh, we also got a nice logo and stickers. Thank you. Thanks to Batomo Pierschawa. Uh, those stickers are in our booth, so you can get it them also. And that's everything. Thank you.